Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some really interesting stuff. First up, this is CEO of MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, and he's going to tell us not only exactly why he got into Bitcoin, but why gold is far inferior to Bitcoin, what's going to happen in five to ten years, price predictions, and overall just why he made this enormous decision. So this is going to be a great video for anybody that you talk to about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and digital assets, especially the gold bugs, because his argument crushes everything they say. Also, good news, bad news for Ethereum. The top Buterin updates the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap. Details plan to exponentially increase scalability. And what he's talking about here is going from 15 transactions per second, which is absolutely nothing, all the way up to a potential 100,000 TPS using a thing called rollups. And good news, KuCoin Crypto Exchange alleges to have found Ethereum hackers, which is really not the big story. The big story is, is why were supposedly some decentralized projects able to stop, potentially reverse, as opposed to other projects like Ethereum, which which were not able to be blacklisted. And finally, SEC Chairman Jay Clayton backs the innovation in crypto, but warns of tricky play. And this is always an interesting topic. I've been in the game since 2017. Some of you have been here for a lot longer and we've all heard the same song and dance. The, a the ETF is right around the corner. Well, this could actually be it, but I will just tell you right now, don't hold your, don't hold your breath. First, let's jump into what's going on in today's market. So today, it is Saturday, October 3rd, and just so you know, I tried to do a live stream and totally failed on uh, the Digital Asset News uh, channel, but I was able to do a live stream over at Digital Asset News Clips, so everything we're going to talk about here, we did a live stream over there, uh, if you can go check that out. I created Dan Clips uh, for two reasons. One is because sometimes I go a little bit too long on these videos, like 30, 40 minutes, so I want to break down all the clips, so instead of having 40 minutes, you can just watch clips of three to five, maybe seven minutes. And the second reason was is because I don't want YouTube to shut me down and go, hey, great job, and now get out of here. So I have that as a backup. And also, we do exclusive videos over there, so check it out when you got time digital asset news clips but here's what's happening with the market so this was actually a great day considering what is going on so we had the bitmex scandal uh, where the CFTC came down and said, hey, uh, you guys aren't doing the right things. You are violating the Anti-Money Laundering Act and you've opened up an exchange without getting proper approval and we don't like that. So there are some problems there. And on top of that, we had tens of thousands, I think maybe hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin uh, that were siphoned out of BitMEX, not by hackers, just by people who said, hey, I wanna deal with this. So I'm gonna take my Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies out of here now before the CFTC comes down and does who knows is what I don't know if that's gonna happen but uh, uh, I always err on the side of caution so I can see why people definitely would do that so we had that part and then also uh, the second part president of the United States came down with the coronavirus so we thought that there would be a huge tumble but uh, hey here we are Bitcoin's up 0.3 percent I like to see that and ethereum 2 percent hitting my threshold of 350 great job ethereum tether's tether XRP I I think as far as stable coins, I know I know Tether is uh, tethered to the US dollar. I think XRP is tethered to the quarter because it's always around 25 cents. Binance coin uh, up 3.7, $28 and in that fifth spot. So congratulations to all you Binance coin holders. I do not, but hey, I'm a big cheerleader for everything that's cryptocurrency, so congratulations. Bitcoin Cash up 1%, Polkadot half, Chainlink up 3.2, uh, but still below that $10. What are you gonna do? Litecoin, crypto, everything's up. It's a pretty good day. Geez, 10.6% for Tron. I don't know why that is, but uh, maybe someone can enlighten me in the comments section. Also, big news. Wow, Theta Network's in the top 30. Look at that, 10.5%. And uh, I was on Alex Maschioli's show yesterday, and uh, we've, they've, got a lot of, they've got a couple of really smart guys over there, some TA people from uh, Market Rebellion, and they've actually called a lot of good good calls that I thought they were like full of it but they actually they I remember one was Monty he said yeah Chainlink's gonna go to below 10 I'm like you're full of it and hey here we are but uh, I got a chance to tell him about Theta and just talk about you know how great I think it's gonna be and uh, where it actually is going and uh, yeah I mean I see big things for Theta it's one of my one of my new holds and uh, so far so good also on top of new holds Uniswap of course, I got to have a free just like everybody else, but I do believe in the project. I like how they did the airdrop to the community, not to whales. So looking pretty good. Ave up 5.6, Synthetics up 2.4, Uma, UMA, 4.93. Anything fantastic. Wow. Celsius Network making a, just crushing it. 30% up for the week. 
13 percent 24 hours a dollar 21 i remember when it was like 75 you know 50 cents and here we are so take a look at celsius if you don't know celsius is one of my uh, i have 30 percent of my entire portfolio in the celsius network not in celsius itself just in the wallet uh, i believe in it it's a great project and you get uh, really good interest now there's other places that might give you more interest but i trust it so uh it, i'm allowed to uh sleep soundly at night just saying all right so let's jump into today's top story so first up um, i've already prefaced this i think this is huge i like where michael saylor is going so let's just jump in so this as a recap uh micro strategy is a billion dollar company one of those silicon valley places a data and analytics firm and saylor said hey he had like around 500 million dollars he goes i'm sitting on a melting ice cube essentially because of the quantitative easing the money printing and the uh amazingly amount of inflation so i'm gonna put in a bitcoin and he's not a dumb guy i think this guy i believe he went i'm pretty sure he went to mit uh, he started his company at 24 uh made it into a billion dollar company and uh he's done a lot of research and he said of all the different assets uh bitcoin was the one and he was going to go into, into gold but he explains why and i think this is important for everybody to listen to as a as a because of what all the gold bugs will tell you and michael just shoots holes in all their theories so let's just start with the very first one why i made the move quote where you said you were sitting on what a 500 million dollar melting ice cube why do you see it like that well you know for the last decade i didn't pay much attention to macroeconomics and uh, i just thought of it as we had a conservative treasury policy and we had 500 million dollars or more and we're going to generate two or three percent interest on it and we'll use it when we need it but of course, over the past year or so, that interest rate for, went from two to zero. And um, then everybody woke up to the world of macroeconomics this year because we had the largest intervention of the Federal Reserve maybe in the history of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, that drew me into a deep dive. And I started studying the expansion of the monetary supply. And I realized that for the past decade, the monetary supply has been expanding by 7%. And uh, the actual inflation rate on assets is not 2%. The inflation rate on assets is 7 to 8% if you're holding equity, and the inflation rate on a bond is 22% if you're holding a long bond. And now I realize that the estimate for the next few years has got to be 10% or more. And so when you start thinking about your cost of capital being 10%, and you're holding 500 million in cash that's yielding zero, I realized my, my real yield is negative 10% at least for the next three years. And so I imagined $150 million getting burned or melted away, and it made me very anxiety ridden. That's amazing. So this is just one CEO talking about one business, about what's going on, and he realizes that, hey, if I don't get off this fiat, I'm going to just lose money just sitting here. This is just one person. What do you think is going to happen over the next year? Three years, ten years, twenty years, when all the different CEOs, all, I mean, most of the CEOs figure it out. Like, hey, I'm sitting, we're sitting on this money, and we have all our investors and all our stockholders, and they're going, "What's going on with the business?" Because we're losing money. You're losing money because of the inflation, and they're going to say, "Well, what's an asset that we can get into?" Well, we can. I mean, they can definitely get into gold. They can definitely get into other options. But I mean, Bitcoin. The way that Sailor is talking about it here, it's like a no-brainer. So I think that people will actually migrate that way. And then this next part, the question is, well, why didn't she go into gold? Because gold has been uh, the safe asset for a millennia. And he answers it perfectly. And this is what I think everybody should be answering when they talk about gold versus Bitcoin. I considered gold, and then I started studying the two. And then I realized that gold miners are going to produce about 2% more gold every year. And then I realized that, that uh, there is a possibility over the next 100 years that more than 2% of gold be increased. But let's just say in the best of the world, for 100 years, we produce 2% more gold. That means $100 million will be debased down to $12.5 million in 100 years. But on the other hand, Bitcoin is, is exponentially going to infinity stock to flow. There's never going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin. So you're really talking about at most diluting $100 million of Bitcoin by $10 million over the 100 years. And given, given the fact that Bitcoin is, is an infinitely hard asset, whereas gold can be produced by human beings, given enough incentive, I realized that over the long term, um, Bitcoin is the harder asset than gold. Interesting. So 
he's going to get into this because I know like when I first saw this, I was like, okay, so you're telling me that people can just make gold? And that's not what he's saying. He's saying about mining and finding gold and things like that. So we're going to get into this, in, into the, in the weeds a little bit more about, you know, actually getting gold, mining gold, and how it can actually be hyper accelerated, I, I, I guess you might want to call it. So it's a, it's a pretty good argument because, hey, uh, there's a difference between finite and scarce. When you have a scarcity, I mean, there's just not much of it around, right? But there's some around and you can find more of it. But finite means it's finite. It's only 100, 200, 21 million. And with Bitcoin, that's it. There is no more. We're going to find some more or we're going to get more computers to make some more. It doesn't work like that. So, I mean, he's got a great point. And this is one of those things where you start to poke the holes in the gold bugs arguments. All right. So next part, they're going to talk about, and it's a pretty good question because uh, the moderator here is saying, hey, uh, I talked to a lot of gold bugs and they say that gold is going to go to 20,000 per ounce because of all the money that's going to escape from the bonds market. So uh, how is that going to work? Because if all the money is going to go to bonds, where's the money for Bitcoin? And before I go on, I just want to make mention that Stansberry Research, I'm actually going to like this one and subscribe because it's really worth it. Stansberry Research, if you don't know, uh, they're a subscription-based publisher of financial information and software serving millions of investors around the world. they got a lot of smart people, a lot of good people. Uh, Max Kaiser's there, so uh, how good can it be? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Max Kaiser's a pretty entertaining guy, but he's got a, got a lot of great uh, information on here, so I would uh, highly recommend to uh, take a look at what's going on macro-wise, and they also cover a lot of things with, with cryptocurrency digital assets. So jumping back, I have to get off topic, let's talk about uh, the whole argument of gold's going to 20000 per ounce. When the money starts leaving the bond market, which it already has, it will naturally flow into gold, and that's what will drive gold to five, ten, twenty thousand dollars an ounce. Uh, what are your thoughts on that reasoning? I don't think it's a very intellectually deep argument. For example, I, I do believe that money will flow from the market to something different. And by the way, gold would be my number two choice. But if you double the price of gold, you're going to double the incentive of miners to produce gold. And if gold goes up by a factor of ten. Human beings have a way of putting capital in the mining and ingenuity, and they'll invent better ways to mine it. And at some point, they'll melt down their jewelry or they'll find other gold. On the other hand, if Bitcoin goes up by a factor of 10, no amount of investment in Bitcoin mining can produce more Bitcoin. It's extremely hard. So the history of commodities, and gold is simply the most pristine of all commodities, the history of commodities is that when the price goes up, human ingenuity and human capital produces more. And we have in front of our face, the best example, which is fracking. The, the country had an oil, uh, uh, oil capacity limit, and we thought it was a problem. And when oil prices got to $100 a barrel, we invented fracking. The amount of oil produced in the United States went from 5 million barrels a day to 10 million barrels a day in five years. There's no oil crisis in America anymore. And so really anything that can be produced by people at a high enough price will be produced. So there you go. That's a great example about um, so so when gold bugs say, you know what, there's only so much gold in the world. That is true, but we don't know exactly how much. Nobody, and I mean nobody, can tell you exactly how much gold there actually is. We can speculate. But we have no idea what's in the ground. We could at some point find some large reserve under the ocean. I have no idea. I'm not a geologist. I don't even play one on TV. So I, I don't know exactly how much gold there is out there, but we keep finding more of it. And that's pretty amazing. So we will never find more or more Bitcoin. That's just that's just the hard truth. And I know people say, I mean, some gold bugs say, well, you can do these forks and whatever else. Yeah, well, look how good the other forks did. Have you heard of uh, Bitcoin diamond? Have you bit heard of Bitcoin potato? No, because, well, first of all, Bitcoin potato doesn't work. Bitcoin diamond, nobody cares about because it doesn't even really even have any, serve any function. So uh, all these hard forks they talk about, sure, you can hard fork, but there really is nothing else like Bitcoin. That's just how it's going to be. So the next one is just like a little caveat. Uh, the moderator here says, or the interviewer says, hey, you know, we haven't found any more major uh, gold mines anymore. So that means that there's not going to be any more gold. He's like, that's not true. Given enough money and given enough wherewithal, no, no one's going to melt down their Bitcoin jewelry to sell it <laughs> at the right. price, right? And the, the key point here is if I put $100 billion into gold mining, I will produce more gold. How much more we can debate? If I put $100 billion into Bitcoin mining, I will produce no more Bitcoin. I will just produce more security, right? There, it, it's impossible 
even if you put a trillion dollars into Bitcoin mining, it's impossible to produce more than 21 million Bitcoin. All you're doing is making the network better and safer. But at a trillion dollars of gold mining, you will produce more gold. We're just going to debate about how much gold. Perfect answer. Exactly. How much is going to be produced? Don't know. But there's going to be more. Let's just be honest. So now he goes into and starts to talk about what really makes Bitcoin so great and will the central bank start to buy Bitcoin? I think they're already buying Bitcoin, but that's just my uh, personal opinion. So let's hear what we got. I think that uh, Bitcoin is digital gold, and that means it's faster. I can, I can move it a thousand places in a couple of seconds. It's stronger. I can pledge $100 million for three hours in Japan on a Saturday afternoon. Right. It's smarter. I can write a computer program that will slice it in a million pieces and do complicated things with it. It's only going to get better every year forever because it's software. And what that means is people that are that are attracted to Apple and Amazon and Google and Facebook because they're smarter, faster, stronger networks. They're going to be attracted to Bitcoin. Logically, that means both central banks weren't buying Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google initially. It'll first be technology investors. Then it will be super high net worth individuals. It'll be private companies. It'll be public companies. It'll be the institutions that bought Apple stock. Initially, Warren Buffett bought Apple stock, but he bought it 10 years after I bought it, right? So eventually then, and then you read about central banks today buying the NASDAQ today, right? But five years ago, central banks wouldn't have bought NASDAQ stock. So maybe maybe they'll get there, but the, it's going to be a natural adoption cycle with waves of other investors taking the asset position first. So that's like one of my things where I think about, I'm like, how far are we? How far down this rabbit hole are we? How... How much time do we have before it really just becomes the big thing and it's in the public consciousness? Not just like me and you. Me and you are just here early. But I'm talking about the people when you walk down the street and go, hey, did you hear about Tron's price? Oh, yeah, it went up uh, 10%. That's what I'm talking about. So not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency digital assets. Like how far are we? I think that we're in with the initial investors and we're slowly getting into the big institutional investors and they're starting to get their claws into it. And I think that once we start to get more regulation, and this is not me talking, this is big money players telling me, hey, when we get more regulation, you're going to see a lot more of the institutional investors come in in droves. So we're going to talk about that in a bit with the SEC, but that's where I think we're at. And once that happens, it's game over. I mean, it's congratulations, you're a millionaire. And uh, yeah. And the next part, he's going to talk about uh, investors versus traders. And he's going to take a hard line stance. And I'm just here to tell you, you know, on my channel, I'm not a trader. I just don't have the time for it. I don't have the stomach for it. I just don't like to do it. So there's, to me, it kind of seems like there's a lot of just investors who set it and forget it. There's just a lot of people who just like to trade and they trade. And then there's a little bit in the middle. Some people like to dabble, you know, like the 80-20 rule. But um, uh, for me, I just, I just don't see it. Now here, Michael's going to say, Hey, I have no respect for traders, but in all honesty, I have respect for traders because you guys and gals uh, are out there just really, really putting it out there and uh, it's a nerve wracking experience. And if you can, Hey, that's it. But you just so you know, um, don't fall in that trap like I did when I first got in, that the only way to make money is to day trade, swing trade, leverage trade. Um, that's not the only way to make money. Let's just be honest. Uh, Warren Buffett worked out pretty well for him just investing. You don't see him talk about trading. So this is just real quick little snippet and uh, off we go. Paul, the last one I saw was, you know, it could go to a million. Uh, what kind of forecast do you hold? You know, I, I believe that the, the price of Bitcoin and the value of Bitcoin is going to go up as more people adopt it as their treasury reserve asset, as the technical utility increases, uh, as the productivity of all the people that adopt it goes up they'll sweep their cash flows into it. And then as the inflation rates of all the fiat currencies it trades in increases, and, and I'm talking about asset inflation rates, like the 10% a year, I'm not talking about CPI inflation rates. Those four drivers are going to drive it up. At what rate? I can't, I'm not a trader. I, I don't really res, you know, respect traders, to tell you the truth. Like I'm not in the market to buy it this week, sell it next week and buy it back the next week. I'm more in the Warren Buffett school of thought, which is you buy it because you expect to hold it right. forever. 
and it will go up over time. I just don't know at what rate and to what level, except obviously I believe it's extraordinarily valuable. So yeah, I don't know where it's going to go either. My price prediction is anywhere from 100,000 to 250,000. Um, if you're Raul Paul and Mike Novogratz, you're talking a million. And then everybody's in, in, in between. Tim Draper, I think, is 250K as well. But uh, it will go up. And especially when people, especially the big money players, the CEOs, the big corporations figure out, hey, uh, our money's on fire. We need to do something about it. Oh, let's just put in this asset where it's quantitative hardening. No easing to do. And then lastly, and this was just a great way to talk to the people that you know about how this is going to change and how it's going to actually improve the lives of people as far as like crypto and digital assets and Ray just talks about hey Bitcoin is going to dematerialize gold on top of these other things so just take a listen our company's full of technology lovers and Bitcoin is digital gold it's a, it's it's the dematerialization of gold in the same way that Apple dematerialized your camera and Facebook dematerialized your photos and Google dematerialized your library. So it's really cool to be on the edge of the virtual wave where you're doing something that's going to be a million times better than what came before it. Perfectly said, right? Are we gonna stay in a standstill? Are we going to keep using pay phones or maybe we could use our cell phone? Are we going to keep using faxes? We're we going to use the internet. Well, some people actually still use faxes, which is crazy. Are we going to put our money into gold, which is heavy, which can't be transported too easily, which is not really divisible, which isn't open source, which is not decentralized, which has a different other problems that, uh, that Bitcoin can actually solve? Or are we going to use cryptocurrency digital assets? Come on. I mean, that's just only, it only, to me, it only makes sense. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section and let's move on.